AP Computer Science A Unit 6 Arrays Lesson 1 1 Dimensional Arrays. The objectives of this lesson are to learn what an array data type is and how to declare and initialize an array. You will also learn how to extract and edit data which is contained in an array and understand how array elements are indexed. This unit focuses on a special kind of object that can hold several items of the same type at once. Natural language has given ways to give a single name to a population. Pack of wolves, a herd of cattle, a pride of lions, etc. In Java, when we have a collection of items of the same type, we can define them all together as an array. Each item in an array is formally called an array element. There is an important advantage in using one name for all of a group of similar items and distinguishing them only by a number. It can lead to simpler code. For example, if you need to store 100 song titles, you could declare 100 separate variables. Oh, but what a pain it would be to write 100 declaration statements and then keep track of 100 different variable names. The easier solution is to use an array and declare just one variable, a song array variable. And then it has lots of things in it. Think of it like a playlist. Now, below is a visual analogy for arrays. I want you to stop the video and match each part of the picture with one of these four array concepts. We have the array name, the array index or position, the array value or element, and the array length. Below, we have the homes of Stephen, Sam, Gerald, Jackie, and Alan. They have addresses, and they're all on Harvard Drive. So pause the video and match array name, array index position, array value element, and array length with the street name, house numbers, house, and number of houses. Okay, let's see how you did. The street name, that's the array name. You could call it people on Harvard Drive, or Harvard Drive Homes, or whatever, but Harvard Drive would be the street name. It would be a way to, to say all of these have this in common. Harvard Drive, all these homes, all these people live on Harvard Drive. The house numbers are the index or the position. Stephen's address is zero, Sam's is one, Gerald's is two, etc. The house is the actual array value or element. Okay, or you could even say it was the name of the person's house. And the number of houses, well, that's the length of the array. There are five houses. The length of the array would be five. Now some rules. I know rules are not fun, but hey. Arrays are zero indexed, meaning the first position in an array is always zero. That's because an array, when you declare an array, the it's the location of the very first element. That very first location is not offset by anything. It's at that location. And then each consecutive item is offset from the initial position of the array. As you go down the array from left to right, the, the positions increase by one. The length is the number of values in the array, and the last index for an array is always length minus one, because we start indexing at zero, so the first is zero, second is one, etc. Therefore, the last is the length minus one. When you declare an array, if we look at the non-array non way, we would say double temperature one, double temperature two, double temperature three, and so on. The array way, ooh, but how many temperatures are we going to have? Well, if we don't know, we can just say that we're going to have an array of doubles and we're going to call it temperature. And we haven't instantiated yet. We haven't said new. So right here, the brackets, that tells us that's, that this is not a single double value. This is a list of doubles. It's an array. Now, arrays need to be created with a fixed length before they can be used. So that previous declaration simply said, hey, I have an array that I'm going to call temperature. But you haven't created it yet. 
once we've declared it, we have temperature, okay, because we already declared it. Now we can set it to new double three. I'm going to have three temperatures. They're all going to be typed up. Or I could declare it and instantiate it all at once. I'm going to have an array of doubles, and it's going to contain three. Now, the way that we declare and give it a length, we say the type of variable, the brackets, and by the way, the brackets are just above the enter. They're below the curly braces. So it's left bracket, right bracket. And then we put the name, that's the variable name, is set to new. And this type needs to match this type. And then inside our brackets, we say how many of those we're going to have. So it's a length. So if I have an array of 10 integers, I would say int, open bracket, close bracket, numbers equals new int, and then I would put 10 in the brackets. An array for five Booleans, same thing. Notice, Boolean, Boolean, the types match. Here's the name of this array, and here's the number of values. The type here is string, it's names, and I'm going to have 100 of them. Some common mistakes. Int values set to new array 5. Oh, yeah. We don't call it an array. The brackets tell us it's an array. This needs to be new int 5. Okay, let's look back here. Int, new int, not array, type. As a matter of fact, let's uh, do this. Never tell what my little computer is going to do, but we're going to do a copy. And we're going to come over here, and we're going to put it right here. Okay, so this is what it should be. So we're going to have int nums is set to new int 3. Hmm, what's wrong? Over here I just declared nums as an integer, as an int value. I didn't say it was an array, so I can't instantiate it as an array. Over here I have int stuff 4. This actually works in other languages, but not in Java. I have to say int and then I have to give it the brackets, stuff is set to new int 4. So this is kind of a tricky one. But these are some common mistakes. Watch out for them. Creation with initial values. What if you want to create your array and load it up with its values at the very beginning? Okay, well, I can do int values is set to, and then inside of curly braces, I can do one, two, three, four. This is only used for declare and assign, not just assign. Okay, so notice I can, oops, I can declare it as an array and then give it the values. I cannot declare an array and then give it values and then give it, put the elements in. It doesn't know how many. Okay, you gotta be really careful. String, words, and then I can just put the words in. This automatically makes it an array of three. This makes answers an array of four, and this makes grades a double of three. Okay? Now, again, I can't, even though I know my array of values is going to have four elements, I cannot instantiate, I can't provide it values this way. Right? The curly braces and the list can only be used when you declare and assign all in one step. Now, default values. When an array is created, the values in the array will all be the, de the default values for that type. So, double temperature is set to new double three. An array variable holds a memory location. So I've got temperature and it's going to point to an array that's got three values and the default type for double is 0.0. .0. So here I've got 0, 0.0. For an int array, 
the default values are zero. For a Boolean array, the default values are false. And for a string array, or any reference type, any object, the default values are null. It's important to know what your default types are because if you don't instantiate them, if you don't give it values in the beginning, they will get their default values. Storing values. Remember, I can't use the curly brace and put in my three items. So I would have to, if I didn't put these items in in the beginning, I would have to say temperature sub zero is set to 74.3. Temperature sub one is set to 68.4 and temperature two is set to 70.3. That would take and replace each one of those zeros in temperature with the values assigned. Now, what if I'm storing lots of values? Well, if I hit set scanner to my system in, and I've got my double temperature and I'm going to make it 100. How long is the array? It's 100 long. The last index is 99. Okay, so a painful way to do this is to say temperature sub zero is set to input dot next double. The next line, temperature sub one, and all the way down to temperature sub 99. Ooh, that defeats the purpose of using an array. You're using an array in this painful way as if you had 100 separate variables. You don't. You have one array variable, and the index just has to change, and the index is an integer. So the non-painful way is to use iteration. For int i, i starts at the beginning as 0 and goes up to and includes 99. So it'll be 0 through 99. Temperature sub i is set to input dot next double. So this will get an input, loop around, get the next input, loop around, get the next input. Notice two lines of code. Over here, you're going to have 100 lines of code, a lot of typing, and the potential for some typos. Now, the length. The length of an array. The length is the number of items of an array or that are in an array. And it can be determined, can be determined by using array name, whatever you called it, dot length. Now, notice those of you who took computer science principles and stuff, and if you've already had some um, experience with other programming languages, notice there are no parentheses. This is an array, not an array list, just an array. This is a value. It's not a method. So it would be the array name dot length. So if I wanted if temperature is an array and I want to start at the beginning at zero and go all the way to the end, I would do I less than temperature dot length. If I made this in equals, it would need to be temperature dot length minus one. And I increment by one, and this would get the next one. The advantage is that code automatically works if we change the length of the array. If you decide instead of 100 temperatures, you're going to have 200, that's OK. This loop is still going to work because it's going to get the length when you go to run. Now, accessing values, a non-general way. Okay, and then we have the general way. We have double temperature set to new double five. Great. Double first is set to temperature sub zero. Double mid, temperature sub two. Double last, temperature sub four. And if you think about it, zero, one, two, three, four. Four is the last, two is the middle, zero is the first. What if I don't know how many? Or potentially somebody could come along, change the code, and change the, the length. Then these are no long, the first is still going to be the first, but the mid and the last might be wrong. Well, double temperature, I don't care how long you're going to make it. The first one is always temperature sub zero. But the middle one, I can go ahead and just ask temperature.length divided by two. And this is going to do integer division because length is an int and two is an int. So it will truncate off. So if you have an odd number, it's going to take the first one. Okay. Now, double last, that's just temperature dot length minus one. Remember, you have to subtract one. 
Length is the number of items, but because you start at zero, the last element has an index of length minus one. Okay, this is a much better way to code the general way. Um, if I can move this over here. Oh, that's right, I moved some of this away just because. Oops, these things got a little bit long, but the general way is much better. If you come in and later on, instead of having five temperatures, you find that you're going to have 10 or 15, the general way will take care of finding the middle and the last temperature. If you do this, you're going to have to find this in your code and change it as well. Potential for errors increases. Index errors. Int array list is set to some values. System.out.println last list.length. What is wrong with this line? Well, remember that if there are five elements, the last index is four. Okay, so here I would have an index out of bounds. That's not good. For this one, system.out.println last list minus one. I need the list dot length minus one. Minus one, that's before, that's the spot before the list even starts. Index out of bounds again. Can't have an index less than zero. And then nowhere, list 1.5. When you're looking at a list, you have to do an element or not an element. The index must be an integer. So if you've got it set as a W, you can't. It's got to be an int. Right? Those are common mistakes. Probably the one I see the most is trying to index past the end. Most people don't do the negative one. And unless you've declared a variable as double, this usually is not a problem either. Array errors. When using arrays, there are some limits and restrictions that must be observed. First, an array must contain all elements that are the same type of variable. These are all valid array declarations. String is one, two, three, four. Notice they all have double quotes, so all the elements are strings. I have an array of ints, one, two, three, four. Great. An array of doubles, one, 2.5, three, 5.6. Remember that the one and the three will automatically be promoted to 1.0 and 3.0. Double is bigger or more complicated than int, so the promotion will be automatic. If you look at the next two, neither of these are valid declarations. The first one says I'm going to have an array of strings. One, two, hello. Well, one and two are type ints. Hello is a string. There's no automatic promotion here. String is not a type of number. So there's no automatic promotion and this would fail. Int, not an array. One, two, three point four. Again, we've declared this as an int. 3.4 is a double. It is larger and more complicated than an int, so I can't do anything with it. If I wanted to put 3.4 in, I would have to typecast it. But then why would I typecast it? It would just be 3. Okay? So you got to be careful of the types. And then second, arrays have a fixed length. Once you declare an area with a number of elements, you cannot add new elements to it or remove elements from it when you are talking about an array. Array lists are different. These are arrays. If you want to print out the values in an array, you just use a loop. You start at zero and you go up to less, where i is less than the length or less than or equal to length minus one, and you increment the index by one, and you simply temperature sub i plus Put a space in there so it spaces it out. Or if you wanted each one on a separate line, okay, you could do slash n. And this, instead of the double quotes here, would give you a new line so that each one would come out on a new line. Or you could do print line here. Those are some different ways that you could print out each element within an array. Now, integer variable manipulations. Here I can plus plus, star plus, 
star equals, equals x divided by 5, etc. What about array of integers? Variable manipulation. So here I have my int list is set to new int 5. Boom, I've got it. Now, I come along and I say list sub 2 is 3. List sub 3 plus plus. This will put a 3 in my first spot. This one will increment location 3. So 0, 1, 2, 3 by 1. This will take and multiply list whatever's in 2 by 2. So let's see here. If I do this. Right, running through this list of two, and let's uh, put zero, one, two. So I got the three. Then I increment by one. And then I come back here and I multiply this by two. And I get six. Then I come back over here to four and I take list of two. Okay. And divide it by five. This is integer division. And then, which is why you get the one, because five will go into six once. List of one is set to list of two plus list of three. Remember, this is list of one, not this. This is list of zero. So I have to add those together. So two, seven plus three is 10. And then list, list sub three. So I've got to go 0, 1, 2, 3. So N1, list sub 3, so set to 10. Boom. Good. This is what it would look like after you finish running through the whole thing. Storing and manipulating string values in an array. Okay. Remember that it's the array name and the index. That's the total name of the variable. These are some where you have to kind of say both first name and last name, if you will. So I've got a new string, too. So here's my, my string called names. I've got two locations. The first one gets Harry Potter, and name sub 1 gets Hermione Granger. Then string person A is set to the value in name sub 0. So person A gets this place, and it's set to Harry Potter. Then first is set to names sub 1 here, string 0 to 8. So I start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which is a space. So first becomes Hermione. Then names sub 1 gets changed from Hermione Granger to, it takes Hermione Granger and concatenates is cool onto the end of it. So notice, when you're working with any array, it's the array name, bracket, index, bracket. That's the full name of that particular element's variable name. Some limitations on arrays. Well, here I've got string artist is set to new string 5. And then I'm putting in Taylor Swift, Carrie Underwood, Drake, Maroon 5, and Lady Gaga. Well, what if I want to delete an artist? Uh... Yeah, you can make it an empty string, but you can't eliminate the position. So if I wanted to get rid of Drake, I would just have to say artist sub 2 is set to quote, quote, which would put it back to a null string or an empty string. But I can't remove that location. It's a fixed length. What if I wanted to add another artist? The array length again is fixed. I would have to make a new array. I can make a new array that was one more than this one, then copy this one into the new array, and then set the last one. It's a lot of work. But again, the array length is fixed. I can't add any more. I can change a value, but that means I have to lose something to add something. And that concludes Lesson 1, One-Dimensional Array. Right.